Squad 7 is locked. The probe should reach the stargate of P4A771 in five seconds. Four, three, two, now. Stand up. Stargate game. Grub. General. Stargate SG-1 is one of my favorite TV series, so I tend to give it a rewatch every year or so for the fun of it. During those annual binges, I always have one recurring thought when I get to a specific episode in Season 8. Episode 6, Avatar. The 160th episode overall, Avatar originally aired on August 13, 2004. This episode featured a plot focused on Tilk, played by the amazing Christopher Judge. Seriously, not that it matters, but I have been a fan of both Christopher Judge and Jason Momoa since their Stargate days and enjoy seeing them continue to do great work and be recognized. He's fed him by the Wraith. It's not a good way to go. Indeed. You say that a lot. What? Indeed. Do I? Yeah. I had not noticed. In this episode, Tilk is testing a video game-like simulation to be used for training based on technology from an earlier episode in Season 2, The Gamekeeper. Think VR chair that links with your mind. Pretty basic sci-fi. It is a fun episode due to the game learning from and adapting to Tilk to make the scenario harder and harder, and allows Judge to step outside of the character's usual stoic attitude to show a bit of desperation or sadness. All security teams to the gate room. So some of you probably already know where I'm going with this, right? Why don't we have any good Stargate games? There are several sequences throughout the episode that are rendered in CG, poorly by today's standards, but passable enough for the time, that reflect what the team supervising Tilk see. These are actually early test images from a Stargate game being developed at the time and meant to be a sort of backdoor reveal. Stargate SG-1, The Alliance, was a cancelled first and third person shooter that would have been based around the titular SG team. It would see players taking control of one of the individual members of SG-1, with each offering their own unique abilities. O'Neill would have a sniper rifle, Tilt could melee, Carter could hack computers, and Daniel could translate text. There were plans to include cooperative multiplayer, with the CPU taking over the other team members of playing solo. The game did manage to reach a playable alpha build before being canceled due to legal trouble over ownership and transference of rights. Based on the previews of the time and leaked builds showing up online over the years, people have experienced what sounds like it would have been a faithful trip into a much beloved sci-fi universe. Think Star Wars Republic Commando, but with Goa'uld and replicators while using P90s and battling Jaffa. It honestly wouldn't have needed to set any records, just being decent and getting the details and immersion right would have made this one stand out. There were a few other entries into the gaming world from this franchise, and I guess I did technically skip the first one. Stargate based on the 1994 movie, was a platform game released that same year for both of the major 16-bit consoles. The game follows the events of the film, with players taking control of Kurt Russell's Jack O'Neill as he attempts to escape Abydos and defeat the Supreme System Lord Ra. It's O'Neill, with two L's. There's another Colonel O'Neill with only one L. He has no sense of humor at all. The game has pretty average reviews, with most publications agreeing that the game was fine enough and just really struggled to do anything new. That entire generation was a little diluted with action platformers, so what can you expect from a movie tie-in cash grab? The next big whiff of a Stargate game came in the form of Stargate Worlds, a planned MMO that never saw the light of day. Throughout our history, man has crossed great distances on missions of discovery to explore new lands, uncover new life, and to expand empires. 
But new worlds of adventure have always been just beneath the surface. We come in peace. Wait, no we don't. Stargate Worlds. This would have been absolutely bonkers if done right. Development was announced to begin in February 2006, and the plans seemed to include playable races from several of the game's different species. Humans, of course, Goa'uld, Jaffa, and even the Asgard. Fun fact, game footage was actually used in the pilot episode for Stargate Universe when Eli enters the ancient code into the in-universe MMO Prometheus. Maybe that's what happened. The game was meant to test us all, but a beta tester solved the ancient puzzle and was recruited to the program. Hmm. After that, someone finally managed to actually release a game set in the Stargate universe, even if it did end up short-lived. Stargate Resistance was an online third-person shooter that released in 2010 and managed to keep its servers running up through the following January in 2011. I hope those of you who got to play this game did enjoy it during its short life. I personally did not catch this one in time, but it does sound like there are fan servers running online for those that are interested. It's definitely something that I might look into in the future. There was an episodic mobile game released in 2013 that managed to get two episodes out before going out of business and being removed from app stores. I had not even heard of this one prior to researching this topic, but I honestly doubt we are missing any life-altering content here. The most recent entry into this rather small group of games is the upcoming Stargate Timekeepers. Timekeepers will be a real-time tactics game and was announced in May of 2021. The publisher has stated that they expect gameplay to feel similar to Desperados 3 or Shadow Tactics. The game supposedly underwent beta testing last summer in 2022 and did recently get a Steam page so maybe someone else will actually manage to get a game out the door. Fingers crossed, I will at least check it out if it's released. So I do give some credit to these various developers over the years. Clearly several of them had some passion for the franchise and wanted to bring us more of the universe in the unique format that video games provide. Other than the mobile game, most of these sound like fair attempts to make a Stargate game. If I could have whatever I wanted in a game, I do tend to lean towards the tactical approach. Maybe you could include some base building or management features into the game in the form of off-world garrisons like the Alpha Site. We could even use the creative power of video games to visit planets with ecosystems other than Canadian forest. You could probably even have fun with the real-time strategy genre by scaling up the conflicts a bit above individual SG teams. Imagine the space battles possible between the various factions shown over the years. BC-304s, Hatoks, maybe some Wraith Hive ships, hell, even Ori warships all duking it out over some amazing background in space maybe reference a certain black hole or supernova in the distance. This may not be possible, you know. Come on, Sam. It can't be any harder than blowing up a sun. You know, you blow up one sun and suddenly everyone expects you to walk on water. Look, I'm just saying that no matter which way you went with it, there'd probably be Stargate fans waiting on the sidelines ready to give it a try. I know I would. I just hope that it could be something more than Call of Duty with P90s and staff weapons. If you're still here at this point, Please consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss any future videos. Hopefully, we can do one about an amazing new Stargate game at some point in the future. Hopefully. Be sure to like the video if you did, and let me know what you would like to see in your ideal Stargate game in the comments. I always appreciate any and all of your time. I've been Dr. Ursa, and until next time... Jafar! Creep!